Hello YouTube, this is Matt Pullen, and today I'm going to bring you a very basic lesson in Rook vs. Pawn endgames. Uh, this is a, an endgame study which I composed. It's not very deep, but it, uh, but it shows the center concept that I want to get across, which is that Rook vs. Pawn endgames, like most endgames, are decided by king position. So, uh, it's black to play and draw. The pawn is moving down. Queening square is on c1. And uh, the white rook is behind the pawn on c8. A uh, white king is very far away. So, if we look at the square of the pawn, which is often useful in endgames involving a pawn, we see that uh, the white king is way outside of it. However, uh, the square of the pawn is not so important here because this uh, this pawn is not a runner; it is uh, more like a toddler who uh, needs his father's hand to take a step. Uh, in this case, the black king needs to advance before the pawn can advance, since if white if uh, black just played c3, then white would take it with his rook. So, uh, th bearing that in mind, how many moves will it take black to support a queen? First, he must advance his king, so that's one, and the pawn, so that's two, three, four, five, six. It takes black six moves to support a queen. Now, how many moves does it take white to uh, contest the queening square? One, two, three, four, five. So it takes white five moves to get there and black six moves to, to uh, support a queen. So that suggests that uh, even though it's black to move, uh, six versus five, uh, black is short a tempo he's going to lose. However, if black knows the, uh, the appropriate strategy, then even in this endgame, he can get a draw. Let's look at what happens if white uh, advances with his king and black tries the most obvious way to uh, advance the pawn. So uh, king b4, that move is kind of forced, and then king g6, and now if black plays uh, c3, again pushing the pawn forward as quick as possible, but this, uh, this is not the right strategy, and we'll see that black will lose. After king of 5, king b3, king e4, c2, and now it's white's move, and uh, white plays king to d3. And here the pawn is not ready to advance yet to the queening square, but the uh, the white king and the rook are uh, are double teaming the black pawn, so uh, black will lose. White will go on to checkmate with king and rook for Sloan king. So let's go back. Uh, in this position, uh, after white has played king g6, uh, we saw that in the previous uh, sequence, uh, black lost because white's king was on the opposite side of uh, the pawn as black's king, and the kings both got there at the same time, yet the uh, white king and rook were able to win the pawn. Well, let's, uh, the key concept here and uh, the drawing move is to play king c3. And uh, in, if you've uh, studied other endgames that involve uh, you know, pawn races, this seems counterintuitive. Why block your own pawn? Uh, the answer is that uh, black is uh, doing a crossover maneuver. He's going to cross over his king in front of the pawn. And by doing so, he's going to shoulder out the, uh, the white king when it gets to f5, so the white king will not be able to get any closer to the black pawn. For instance, king f5, king d3, and now uh, we see that uh, the white king can't approach the black pawn because black is shouldering off the white king. So uh, if, uh, if white tries to go around the long way, then uh, we will see that, uh, to, you know, to contest the queening square, uh, we will see this will be too slow. Like uh, king f4, and now black just pushes the pawn c3, king f3, c2, k4, 
king f2. And now if white had one more move, he could play uh, king e1. And with the white king on e1, uh, black would be in the Zug's fang. He'd have to move his rook away. I mean, he'd have to move uh, his king away and uh, lose the pawn to the white rook. But it's black's move, and uh, he plays uh, king d2. And this threatens the queen, and the white king can do nothing. So black gets a draw. Let's look at another attempt. Instead of king f4, what if white plays uh, rook d8? gets uh, black in check. What's the right king move here? Well, uh, if black plays king e3, it's an easy draw. Remember, the key thing in uh, rook versus pawn for the inferior, inferior side, the inferior side needs to keep the other king out. So this, uh, this keeps the white king out, and it allows for the advance of the uh, pawn. The black pawn can advance freely now that there's no longer a rook behind it. So uh, after white plays like rook c8 to get behind the pawn, he has nothing better. Then black just repeats position with king d3. So uh, in summary, in this position, if black rushes straight ahead for the uh, you know to make the queen, then the white king will get there at the same time and uh, black will lose. But if black takes the time to cross over the pawn to uh, prevent the white king from uh, attacking the queening square, then black can secure the draw. So what happens if white moves first here? Well, if uh, king g6, king b4, king f5, now this same idea crossing over in front of the pawn is not going to work here because king c3, white just plays king e4 and uh, uh, black cannot keep the white king out. In fact, uh, the white king will move next to uh, d4, and then the pawn will come under attack. Uh, so instead of king c3, if black trust tries to promote the pawn straight away, then uh, white will be much too fast. This pawn will drop next move. Uh, so let's go back to this other variation. After uh, rook d8 check, what if black moves in front of his pawn, king c2? This is uh, counterintuitive because it gives up all the progress black had made with his crossover maneuver to keep the king out. See here, white can approach with his king, and black will just have to lose tempo because he's blocking his pawn. So king e4, c3, and now white plays king e3, and the next move white will make will be uh, king to d3. So black, black is in Zugsfang. He can't prevent uh, white's king from getting into d3. So the game would end something like king b1, king d3, c2. Black, black is threatening to queen, but white can play rook b8 check. And the only move not to just lose the pawn next turn is to play king c1. But then rook c8, and uh, the black pawn will fall. So, in summary, the key uh, to this study is that the inferior side, the side with the pawn, wants to get his king on the same side of the pawn as uh, the opponent, so as to cut the opponent's king from, uh, you know, from coming underneath the pawn. Well, I hope, uh, I hope you learned something if you didn't know anything at all about this particular type of endgame. And... Uh, I think that my next uh, video will be a more complicated rook versus pawn study by uh, Richard Reddy, in which case uh, you will need to understand the uh, basics behind this type of ending to uh, appreciate that study. Well, I will talk to you next time. Bye.